This is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. And our theme for today focuses on the power of God. We live in a time in our own political environment where we trust political powers to be strong for us. But we know that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And it was no different in the time of the Old Testament, when the nation of Israel had been attacked by the Assyrian Empire, and much of what we call the Northern Kingdom was carried off to live in Assyria. Remember that after King Solomon, the kingdom split into two groups. There was a southern section called Judah, made up of two of the original tribes. And then the rest, part of the northern kingdom, called Israel. Israel was carried away. And so you can imagine that the folks in Judah were just a little bit anxious. Especially when the Assyrians' rivals to the east the Babylonian Empire came in and conquered Assyria, taking over and appropriating the capital city of Nineveh. Remember that from the story of Jonah. Well, the Israelites were a little nervous because the Babylonians were forcing them to pay tribute and installing puppet kings to rule in Judah. So, King Zedekiah had an idea totally forgetting the fact that Israel had once been slaves in Egypt, he approaches Egypt as a political ally, thinking that the Egyptians would be strong enough to prevent the Babylonians from invading their country. At that time, about 600 years before Jesus, God raised a young man named Jeremiah to be the prophet. And Jeremiah stands up to the authorities and says, you're, you're, you're making a mistake. This is wrong. You should put your trust in God and not political entities. Our first lesson this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. And this is our first lesson. Now, some of the verses in today's psalm are going to sound very familiar. And that's probably because you just heard them. Jeremiah was quoting them when he spoke to the people about the importance of trusting God. Now, that's a psalm that was written thousands of years ago, but it could just as easily speak to contemporaneous society. One of the first scripture passages I memorized as a teenager, join me in reading responsibly Psalm number one. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. 
In all they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the, For the Lord, Lord watches over the way of the righteous, righteous but the, the way, way of the wicked will perish. For the Apostle Paul, carrying out his ministry, it was important to affirm for his readers the power of God that is available to us. And for Paul, nothing gave greater proof of God's power for us than the resurrection of Jesus. The passage we're going to hear this morning is from the end of Paul's first letter to the Corinthian congregation. It's a passage we hear frequently at funerals. A reminder and an assurance for us that resurrection after death exists. I almost said resurrection after life. That sounds like some church council that I know. Bad joke. Apologies to all our church council members. I don't mean you. <laughs> anyway, any rate, life after death is possible because Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, the Greek word here, kairos, it's important to understand it means has been raised. That's different than raised. Because Jesus didn't raise himself from death. He was raised from death by the power of God. And it's that same power that can resurrect us at the end of days and each and every day. From Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20, St. Paul writes, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We're even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Here ends our second lesson. Jesus pointed the way to the kingdom of God. And he did so with power and authority. Doing so in such a way that the people recognized what kind of juice Jesus had. So much so that he was able to go about and heal people through that power. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And in all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 